people are firing off fireworks outside. This will be a good background noise test. This is the G-Track Pro from Samson, and spoiler alert, it's hands down the best USB microphone that I have used to date. One of the many features that makes this microphone unique is the built-in instrument port on the back of the mic, which should make this a perfect USB mic for content creators who want to share their musical instrument abilities alongside their voices. And quick disclaimer, Samson did send me this mic for free in return for a fair and honest review. I'm not at all affiliated with Samson in any way, and all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone. In the box we get paperwork, as always, a USB Type-B cable, and as I have mentioned before, I actually prefer Type-B USB cables for microphones. They're chunkier, more rugged, and less prone to mishap. Without measuring, it appears to be about 8 feet long, so it should be plenty long enough to accommodate most use case scenarios. Next, we get a heavy-duty metal mounting bracket, just in case you would want to mount this mic to your own boom arm or mic stand. And here is the mic itself. And this thing is a monster. This microphone is extremely well constructed and really heavy. I believe this was designed to be that perfect desktop microphone without any need to go out and get an additional desktop stand. Basically, just set it and forget it. On the front of the mic we have a mute button, gain knob for mic input, gain knob for instrument input, and a volume knob for headphone output. Up top we have mode switches, and I'll go over these in detail later on in this video. On the back of the mic we have a monitor switch for the headphone output, which sounds fantastic by the way, and a line in for instruments. And this is another thing I'll go over in detail later on in this video. You can unscrew the microphone from its included desktop stand and attach it to the included mounting bracket if you want to use your own stand or boom arm. As far as audio tests, you've been listening to it this entire time, with all of this audio being unfiltered and unprocessed, so what you hear is what you get. My room here is also not sound treated, but it's fairly quiet with no real background noise besides the computer fans underneath my desk, which are pretty negligible. Here's a plosive test in cardioid mode. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. As you've likely noticed, this microphone does suffer greatly from harsh plosives, and it does not include a foam filter. I'm going to throw a foam filter on here, and we're going to do that again. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. So as you can hear, you will get a lot of benefit from putting a pop filter on this mic, but as I mentioned before, it doesn't come with one, so we're going to continue the rest of these tests without a pop filter. And here's a sibilance test in cardioid mode. Sally has a sack of sugary snacks that she shares with a syndicate of seven sneaky squirrels. Sally has a sack of sugary snacks that she shares with a syndicate of seven sneaky squirrels. This is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like at about six inches away from my mouth in cardioid mode. This is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like from the side at about six inches away from my mouth in cardioid mode. This is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like from the other side about six inches away from my mouth in cardioid mode. This is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like from behind at about six inches away from my mouth in cardioid mode. This is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like at about 12 inches away from my mouth in cardioid mode. This is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like at about two feet away from my mouth in cardioid mode. This is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like at about four feet away from my mouth in cardioid mode. Here is a handling noise test. This is what it sounds like as I type and talk with the keyboard directly under the microphone about eight or so inches away from the microphone in cardioid mode. Here's a background fan noise test in cardioid mode.
And now let's take a look at the switches and what they do. Up to this point, as I mentioned, I've been using cardioid mode to record everything in the video so far, which is probably going to be your best setting for single person voice work. This microphone also has a switch for omnidirectional mode, which should record everything equally from all directions, and figure eight mode, which captures audio equally from the front and back for something like an interview scenario or a two-person podcast where each person is sharing the same mic. So now I've switched over to Omni mode, and this is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like at six inches away from my mouth in Omni mode. This is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like from the side about six inches away from my mouth in Omni mode. This is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like from the other side about six inches away from my mouth in Omni mode. And this is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like from behind at about six inches away from my mouth in Omni mode. This is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like at about 12 inches away from my mouth in Omni mode. This is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like at about two feet away from my mouth in Omni mode. And this is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like at about four feet away from my mouth in Omni mode. Now I've switched over to figure eight mode and this is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like at about six inches away from my mouth in figure eight mode. This is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like from the side about six inches away from my mouth in figure eight mode. This is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like at about six inches away from my mouth in figure eight mode from the other side. And this is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like at about six inches away from my mouth in figure eight mode from behind. This is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like about 12 inches away from my mouth in figure eight mode. This is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like about two feet away from my mouth in figure eight mode. And this is what the Samson G-Track Pro sounds like in figure eight mode about four feet away from my mouth. Okay, so now I've switched back to cardioid mode and I wanna talk about the line in for instruments. And unfortunately, I am not a musician. I have absolutely zero musical talent whatsoever. But what I do have is a second wireless microphone here with a one quarter output jack. So I'm gonna run that into the instrument port and hopefully that will be a good enough example of how this works. So now I'm recording this with the wireless microphone into the line in port on the back of the Samson G-Track Pro. And now I'm speaking into the main microphone of the Samson G-Track Pro. Things may sound a little bit wonky as I'm switching back and forth between two mics that are obviously within earshot of each other, but I'm hoping this gives you an idea of what things are going to sound like with things going in through the mic port. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. We have the option of switching into stereo mode, which is what I've done now, and this is going to record the G-Track Pro's main microphone onto the left stereo channel and the instrument input onto the right stereo channel, and I can separate those two and correct them in post if needed. So my final thoughts on the Samson G-Track Pro go like this. This is an excellent mic for the right person. This is not the right mic for me. And the reason that I say that is because this is a great mic for picking up every little bit of sound and picking it up perfectly. As you've noticed, I've put the pop filter back on this microphone because I don't have the world's best mic technique, nor do I have the world's best voice. For somebody who's a singer who has great mic technique, this is going to pick up everything and it's going to come across crystal clear. The reason that I tend to use dynamic microphones, which are a lot more forgiving, is because they tend to cut out a lot of those imperfections. So if you're looking to do something for like a podcast or um, where you're just talking off the cuff for YouTube content creation, you may want to go with a dynamic microphone. For somebody who is a singer with a great voice and understands mic technique, and on top of that is also a musician, who plays an instrument, who can take advantage of the line input port, they're going to get a lot of value out of this mic, especially out of its current price point of $110. But I hope I've given you enough information to make that decision whether or not this is a good mic for you or not. That's it for now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.